Okay, our unrooted cuttings have arrived. Now let's start the manufacturing process. And I use that word intentionally. I want us to think about manufacturing processes. Think about efficiencies and things like that. Well, one of the first things we're gonna do is when those cuttings arrive is we're gonna get those boxes protected. Most of the time, those guys are coming in at a time of year when the weather's not good. The dead of winter in January, maybe, or maybe it's the peak of summer if we're talking about our fall crops. So get those boxes in, get them protected. What I like to do too, is I like to get those a few out right away and I like to take the temperature of the base of the URC, okay? Not just shooting the bag with an infrared thermometer like we see here, but actually measuring the stem temperature. Make sure that that's an appropriate temperature for the cuttings you've received and make sure that they're in good health. Also, just take a look at them. We're looking for rot or pest or disease problems. It's pretty rare in today's environment. We've got really good farms out there supporting our industry, but we still need to check. And then I wanna really encourage you to store them well and store them for as short as possible. As you can see here, the goal at the bottom is to shorten the time from the box to the bench. So let's take a look at a few of those storage characteristics I'm referring to. The first, of course, is temperature. We'll give you some temperature examples, but make sure that your cooler is the appropriate temperature. Maybe a little bit different than what you've seen before or talked about before is the hydration or the humidity in your chamber. Take a look at these two pictures I have here. You notice the picture on the left. Those are unrooted cuttings we've got. On, upon arrival, we just put them in these little trays so we could take a look at them. So here they are, they're kind of deflated. You can see they're uh, you know, all down in those little trays. In this particular chamber, we had a humidifier, just a standard humidifier from your home improvement store. After 24 hours, look how much more hydrated those cuttings became. They've actually kind of risen up, they've expanded. So what we find on average is about, your cuttings or URCs are about 20% dehydrated when they arrive. So maintaining that cold chain, but getting hydration into that cold chain is critical for the success. Here are a couple of different pictures of what I've seen growers do. One of our big large rooting stations at the top right, you can see they actually can roll carts into their coolers, but they have a misting system connected to their vape, connected to their environmental control system, and they monitor that and measure that with v VPD, vapor pressure deficit. We'll talk about that and why that's beneficial in a moment. I've also had some growers just adapt. This is uh, just a spraying system that uh, came from an industrial supply. They were able to hook this up, hook it up to either their environmental control system or a humidity monitor to get, to get moisture into that cooler. Otherwise, a cooler is a very harsh, dry environment that's not ideal at all for our cuttings. Yeah, when we think about cooling, uh, air conditioning is actually removing moisture from the air, and that's why our cuttings get dehydrated. So, uh, we've done a number of research projects uh, at our facility in West Chicago with a number of interns as well. And so how do we know that uh, we can rehydrate our cuttings well and what is really the best method? Because some of you may be thinking that oh, my cuttings are in a bag and I can just leave them in there and they'll hydrate just as well. So these uh, eight pictures here really show what happens when you use different storage techniques for your cuttings while you're trying to rehydrate them. We've got a humid chamber, which are the four pictures on the left, and a cooler without the humid chamber on the right. And what we're looking for is a cutting that's basically gonna be parallel to the ground. We want it flying like a normal bird. We don't want that bird to hit a window and fall down to the ground. So anything that's flying straight or parallel to the ground is what we want. And when you look at these pictures, we see that humidity is going to be the best way to achieve that, but then also the best better way with a humid chamber is no bag at all, actually. That bag reduces air movement, reduces humidity from getting in there. So the best method you can do is to make sure you've got a humid chamber uh, for your cuttings. And obviously we can make this drastic difference in 24 hours. So a very short amount of time to improve it in the efficiency of sticking those cuttings. And we'll see in the future, the uh, improvement of rooting those cuttings.